Hello listeners, welcome to Planet Sky FF, the world where everything revolves around £50,000. My name's Suj. My name's James. This is all, the, this is the only reason we're playing Sky FF. Just don't forget it, 50 I, I, big I, ones. I can already see that £50,000 is a long Burning way in the corner it's, over there. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's like a mirage flickering, <laughs> this is all that's left. Yeah. Uh, is there any other money that we can win? Like manager of the week or something to get like a 50 quid or something? Um, I don't think there's any point starting up a cash league or anything because we ain't winning it. So. No. Game week two's done for Sky. Um, as a overall, it was a bit better for me in terms of game week rank. But both of us are still languishing. I'm at 170,000 overall now. You? 137,000. Mm, I don't think that's particularly good. We we think about 900,000 to a million players, but we haven't had that confirmed. I haven't seen anyone confirmed. No. I mean, to be fair, that's top 20%. That's probably roughly actually the same place as where my um, uh, fantasy, fantasy official FPL team is doing top 20%, give or take. Um, difficult game week, again, because no clean sheet for Liverpool and then blanks all around for me with... Sigurdsson, Jota, Tielemans, and then Allaire and Gilbert. Two donuts, zeros for me. Yeah, I've, I've had a shocker, mate. Literally, I just had Kevin De Bruyne's points, basically. That's, that's 11. my week. I had um, Sterling and Wilson as well, and VVD, so those those were helpful. But Captain Blanks in Salah, Norwood. I thought, I thought Norwood had a good shout of being in with the, the passing tears on Sunday. And Jota Monday night, so... Yeah, 11 points from Kevin De Bruyne and you can count the rest up to the 35. Ouch. Bit of a shit up, but um, I'm learning a lot now and I don't want to speak about it too much because it's a short form pod, but when we before the overhaul, we'll have a real look at some real budget options in this game that are beginning to emerge. I'm not talking at sort of Gilbert's low price, but people like Todd Cantwell, Team of Pookie, even Pookie's it's quite cheap. cheap. Yep. Um, whether you want to take that sort of risk on someone like that, because I don't know how often you'd you'd want to captain him when you feel like you do need your eggs up front to be able to move those captains. I think the big one for everyone this week centres a little bit around on, if you're like me, or that's how it feels to me, is defensive problems. I'm looking into this week and I would say I've got a back five. I'd say four of the five are doubtful for me. So I've got Gilbert, who ideally, hasn't played yet. Who ideally I would just sit as captain Friday night. It hasn't played. Um, and El Mohamedy seemed to play quite well on on Saturday against yep. Bournemouth. I've just had a message off uh, Dan, our Liverpool correspondent, FPL Loco Lord, says he thinks Alexander-Arnold may well get rotated this weekend. John Stones is a doubt, having missed the game last weekend with an injury. And Rudiger's, Rudiger played 90 minutes for Chelsea's under-23s on Monday and could well come in for Zuma or Christensen. And suddenly I'm going, ah, this is, could be a big fucking problem. So what I tried to look at was ways that I could get around my problem. So the first problem is Gilbert. Right? Mm -hmm. If he doesn't play, which I don't think he will, I've got no captaincy Friday night. The first thing to measure is, is it worth it? That's for you to decide. Well, I've, got uh, Sigurds, I've got Gilfrey Sigurdsson in mind. Um, Villa have have looked good from an attacking point of view. So if you could afford a, if you could afford to make a move like a McGinn or what have you, then um, yeah, potentially it could be worth it. I wouldn't make a sideways move to another Villa defender necessarily because well, there are better options. Can't make a sideways move. No, we were speaking off camera about I, I've got zero point eight in the bank. I could move to Burn. Yeah, I really don't think it's worth it. They've got Southampton at home this weekend and you're gambling 100% on them getting the clean sheet this week. Otherwise, it's a waste of a transfer because they yeah. go to Man City in game week four. Yeah. So I don't think that's worth it. I'd rather probably suffer that as a zero and it'll be what it'll be because obviously to move him out otherwise, I've, I've got to make two threes, which considering my injury problems, I might want slash need to possibly. I don't know. But McGinn, I think... He's the standout captaincy option in that game Friday night. I'm sitting on Gilfrey Sigurdsson. There's no issue with having... I think him. more so than, than the Everton guys. Six shots at the weekend from McGinn. Yeah. Massive. Breaking into positions, getting close to Wesley. It's not a joke. Like with, uh, I think it was fourth or fifth most shots um, at the weekend. in the Premier League yep. at the weekend. 
Um, and his cheap price, McGinn, as well. You can certainly have a look at him. Michael Keane I'd consider defensively because he's solid in there and he's a decent price and it's it's not too much of a difficult one for me to move. You could probably go any of them defensively. There's obviously a doubt about Dean. Obviously, the benefit with them is we will see the teams. Yes. But the other thing I'm thinking in the back of my mind is, I mentioned this a little bit on our main FPL podcast, is there's a couple of players really emerging who I think on the other side of this overhaul become a must. And if I want to make a move to cover one of these defensive guys this week, I feel like so obviously it's Wan Bissaka. Mm. I feel like he's priced okay as well. Is he seven point four? I think if I if I remember from memory, uh, no, eight point six. He's eight point six, but I mean that's still very manageable. He's the third highest scoring defender at the moment. Just to give you some of his numbers from the weekend, so he hit. Tier two bonus for uh, pass, uh, passing and tackling. Tackles, yeah. He has earned the most bonus points defensively so far because he had a tackle bonus in the Chelsea game as Three well. Three as well. He looks like at the moment he's capable of picking up tackle bonus every, every week. Yeah. They've got Palace at home this week and Southampton away in game week four. So there's clean sheet potentials in those games as well. Mm -hmm. And it makes me feel like rather than bothering about the the captaincy issue with the Villa game, if Stones is def I've got John Stones, if John Stones is definitely ruled out for City, make that move. Yeah. My challenge at the moment is uh, around whether or not to make transfers. We spoke about it. Now, I don't know um, enough about the strategy in this game but my natural instinct right now is to just keep my transfers. I feel like I'm just keep holding them back as much as possible. Yeah, same. Which I don't know if that's necessarily strategically the best way to play the game. Well, the close that that's one of the things. That it's kind of the main point to make on this is, is like just generally, is it worth it? Yeah. Can I get to the overhaul? Because if I can get to the overhaul without making any transfers, I would like to hold them back. Now, look, we're we're the best part of 120 points away from the top players in this which is quite a way behind and you made a very good point maybe they've made more transfers maybe they've been cuter at who they've been captaining and moving around that captaincy but if they have burnt four five six transfers so far i've used one you've used one right yeah then we can catch up further down the line but does that make the gap already so far behind that it's hard to catch up uh it might be a little bit because in, on reflection this is this is probably the one time we're all going in with different teams. A lot of teams after the overhaul are going to look similar, right? Yeah. You would think for that point there. And your planning is going to be absolutely critical. I think in hindsight, this period was more important than I'd imagined. Not to pull him way in front because I'd want to hold the transfers. I said oh, my, plan was, my plan was ideally not to make any. Yeah. Um, but I think some of the rotation guys, like I absolutely should have taken the gamble to get Aubameyang in on a Sunday morning before Newcastle. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, if I captained him against Newcastle, captained him, which I would have done against Burnley as well, right? that's a big difference to my points. Yeah. And that's got to be done. And that's why we mentioned about like Pookie's cheap, right? He doesn't become an auto like he feels like he is for FPL right now. Because there's no value when in it, When are you right? going to captain him? Well, part that and you're potentially wasting a space when... I feel like value-wise in the game at the moment, you kind of want three big hitting forwards, or two. I've got a, I've got a five three two at the moment with two big. I've got like Kane and Salah. Yeah. Because um, there's so many good budget options emerging, particularly in midfield. There's guys at the back who are emerging, like Soyuncu at Leicester. Yeah, he's bloody cheap, cheap in both games. Six point right? eight and four point five. If he's going to play regularly, you have to start considering that. Yeah. So. I don't know, like, if people are looking for advice in terms of if it's worth making the transfer. I don't know. The one for me really is, like, I can comfortably go Stones to Wan-Bissaka. But if Stones is going to be fit for the weekend, it's not worth it. No, not before the overhaul anyway. But if he's out, yeah. Then it's definitely worth it. We've got... Um, the, the, the next game week, we've got three... Ga we've only got two match days in the next week. Um, and then it's always the match day that's got fewer Whee! games. Friday night oh, again. Friday night. Yeah, yeah, sorry. It's always the match day with less games where you're struggling to get your captaincy cover <laughs> Obviously, now. Obviously, yeah. Spurs, 
Spurs and Newcastle and Manchester City are the two standouts next Sunday, potentially for captaincy cover. Yeah. Spurs have a Sunday game the week after as well. Yeah. Uh, Gooners, where Everton are at home to Wolves, I think, on that day as well, right? So I've got Guilfrey Sigurdsson that gives me that cover on that day, but I don't have Spurs coverage. I'm just thinking Harry Kane gives me two days of captaincy cover there on Sundays, which could be a potentially good captaincy coverage, Newcastle and Arsenal. Yeah, I, I mean, that... The, the game week four, Sunday, Everton, Wolves and Arsenal, Spurs is, is going to be quite a difficult call. Yeah, there's but then a number gonna, of options It's going to be difficult for everyone. So I wouldn't lose too much sleep about it. This Villa Everton Friday night is the last one where it's like, do I have, you, you're going to have someone from them four teams yeah. for that game week four Sunday. This is the last one where it's like, if you haven't got someone, and I think a lot might have gone like my route with just Gilbert here, is it worth it? Is it worth to get someone in and captain them? So, for example, I could go Norwood to McGinn. Like, Norwood was part sitting there to captain him last week as the yeah. game week two yeah. Sunday cover. So he's kind of irrelevant to me now. I look at him as well and go, well, Palace was so, what was the word you used? Obtuse. Impotent. <laughs> yeah, and that. If he's not eating the bonus in a game like that, he's possibly not often going to. Yeah. So that's one that I'm considering as well, is like a Norwood to McGinn. Seems to make a little bit of sense, maybe. Based on the fixtures and who plays, basically, though. Yeah, this is a difficult one for me. I've got Gil Gilbert a la Tielemans, I'm not happy with in my team. And I've also think Wilson at the best part of 10 million that he is, 9.9. .9, there's better value to be had potentially in Wilson. He hasn't picked up any bonus at the moment. Um, yeah, I... I think I'm going to try my best to keep, uh, avoid make any transfers until game week four now and hold them back as much as possible unless I really feel like, you know what, I need to get a captain in for a particular match. Because Harry Kane for for the Newcastle game is such a clear and obvious captaincy option. Yeah. Um, I do like the fact that I don't have to worry about value here at all. That said, you're talking about Sunday, like you've got Sterling in your team, haven't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. I'd go with it. yeah. I'd go with it, I think. Yeah, it's not having like, said that, I've got Kevin De Bruyne, though, so... It's not like that one, like I said, with Aubameyang, where suddenly he was looking at, yep, I've got him for the next technically game days, right? Because it yeah. was Sunday and then Saturday, to captain him in both. With You probably would end up captaining Kane at Arsenal the following week, but you're not dying to do it, are you? No. You'd be doing it for this week. And Sterling at Bournemouth, and then at home to Brighton the following week, like, Sterling would probably Clear look the best option. one in game week four, right? Mm, yeah. So I probably wouldn't force that move. If I was you, yeah, I don't think it's worth it. Who, who are you going captains this weekend at the moment? So at the moment, Gilfie Sigurdsson on the Friday night game, yeah, followed Jealous. by Van Dyke on the Saturday. Yeah, I don't have that many options uh, for captaincy on the Saturday, um, or any good ones anyway. I've got Van Dyke, Trent, Tielemans, or, or Haller, uh, and then on the Sunday will be Raheem Sterling. Yeah, at the moment I've got a Friday problem. Mm. which if Gilbert plays is not a concern. At the moment, I'm edging Van Dyke over Salah for Saturday. Yeah. Van Dyke's picked up five points last week, uh, despite not keeping a clean sheet. That he's, was uh, passing, tier he's, two passing. He's going to hit this passing tier most weeks, mate. Yeah. Um, and Sunday, I, I will obviously be on Kane. I'm expecting a stronger week this week. But I think it's quite dependent on how many of that back five play for Plays. me or not. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's not worth killing myself. Like, if it was FPL, mm. right now you'd be looking at that. Like we've said in FPL, mm, don't really fancy the early wild card here. Yeah. If that was my FPL team, I'd, I'd probably be obliterating it. Hmm. So looking at uh, the teams that are top on the leaderboard at the moment, 282 points. That's double what we're scoring. Yeah. But it doesn't show you how many transfers they've made necessarily. Um but captaining Maguire in a game week, uh, if you had a game week in Madison, McGinn, De Bruyne, Puki, Aubameyang, Sterling, I feel like there must have been some transfers made here. Well, Maguire is a great shout for captaincy at the moment. Mm. That would sound ridiculous. I haven't got any United coverage. If I was to buy Wan-Bissaka before Saturday morning, yeah. I would consider captaining him over Van Dijk or Salah this week. Because Palace are exactly what you said they are at the moment. 
And he's he's going to be hitting these bonuses so regularly. Sure. So I highlighted when we spoke about this last week about Wolves and how the the passing numbers that the Leicester guys had got, I thought was more a reflection of Wolves than it was of Leicester. Yeah. And sure enough, Maguire and Wan-Bissaka were both hitting the tears for passing, weren't they? Yeah. And so did Pogba, by the way. He hit his passing yep. tier as well. So I think United players very captainable this weekend. I'm keen to really keep an eye on that Wolves. That's another one where I'm thinking about, say, Michael Keane or that kind of player to sit in for Everton. I've got Wolves in game week four. I'm going to hit them mm-hmm. fucking passing numbers again because Wolves, Wolves won't... Sit, Wolves sit back. But it's in that... It's not so much to sit back. It's in that type of fixture. Yeah. They don't press the centre-halves and the full-backs unless they really believe they can go and win the ball. They don't want to leave that midfield free isolated essentially from a Wolves perspective as soon as they're man or two down in certain positions because someone's broke through the lines they're yeah. uncomfortable look at even the goal that Marshall scored right Rashford gets into an area where he's behind the lines of the midfield they're not comfortable they're not. they don't want to be in that position so yeah Everton passing numbers expects expect them to hit the tiers in game week four and then obviously there's look at the way they're defending right there's clean sheet potential in both anybody can score at any time yeah. I don't know if it's worth making defensive Transfers moves to get say Keane and wan yeah it's tricky I at really the don't know uh, and I think the instinct with the overhaul coming it's not like it's in a mid-season it's, I mean, it's weeks away now yeah, it's just kind of riding two out more two game weeks. weeks if I, I feel like if, I, if, if, if Liverpool can keep a clean sheet against Arsenal this week that that's one uh, kind of tick in the box and uh, Man City go and do what they need to do at Bournemouth, which is hammer them, then I'm settled because I'll pick up points with Edison Van Dyke, Trent, Kevin De Bruyne, Sterling, and then anything I get off the rest of them is an additional bonus. That's what that's what I'm kind of hoping to ride out this week. And Gilfie's due to return because he's had a couple of blanks. So, you know, he's he's that Mr. Consistent. Third game, hopefully he will come back with something. Then I'll feel comfortable just to roll over in, in game week four and be ready for the overhaul. Uh, yeah, but, Siggy's a very good shout for Friday night. Mm. Um, I think personally, I, I really like McGinn as a captain option for, for that game Friday night. Yeah, I mean, if you've got him, by all means. McGinn's priced well as well. Cheap. Mm. I forget. It's about six points something, I think. Yeah. Um, so he's very gettable. You'll go and check that now, won't you? I will pull it I right think ever, ever, oh. any of them Everton defensively. Yeah, I, I agree because of the, but I don't know if no long term necessarily the option. Seven point four is McGinn, so yeah, he's not he's not cheap, cheap. He's cheap. Cheap for this game, yeah. He's cheap when he's the second highest midfield scorer, right? Yeah, so far. And that's through one goal, mm-hmm. so he's picking up numbers elsewhere, like through shots, uh, three points, and and he likes to have a shot and uh, tackles it, three points yeah, see, in the first. Game. You know, you're not going to see too many players do that in back to back weeks. No tackle. Tears and shooting tears. Another one who hit shooting tears really interesting at the weekend was Zinchenko. Okay. I know I was pretty drunk during the game. I can't remember. <laughs> him shooting. Other than one effort from the edge of the box, I can't remember. Too yeah, many. yeah. Remember with the shots bonuses, they don't have to be shots on target. Salah comes in handy here, right? <laughs> <laughs> just keep hoofing it. <laughs> I mean, with Salah and Kane, we'll, we'll hit um, just shot tears quite a lot through the amount of efforts they I take. I can imagine right? uh, that shoo every time a player picks up the ball who's in your Sky Fantasy team. You're like, I'm not bothered if you get it on target. Just shoo. Just shoo, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shoo. Um, I, I was interested to see how N'Golo Kante did because he's one that picks up tackle bonus all the time. Nothing this weekend. No. Not a single bonus point no. anywhere. Well, with Chelsea, difference obviously previous years where like in the first half they really dominated on Sunday. The second half they got murdered really. And were, by the end, I think the draw was probably a fair result, but by the end they were hanging on. Mm. They leave so much space in central areas to get yeah. counted on. So it's a lot more difficult for... Kante to get into the positions to be making tackles. We've obviously had two tough games, so it's hard to call. And I thought in the Super Cup game against Liverpool, he was he was particularly good, N'Golo Kante. Um, but he's not one to be diving into. Chelsea just feel like watch, 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 watch at the moment. I, I don't see any standouts because they're, they're not into ex- them. excessively cheap either. For for be it for Sky or FPL, I don't mm-hmm. see why you would dive into them at the moment. No. Uh, Aubameyang picked up shot bonus in both of his games mm. as well so far. 
which is understandable for a striker. Uh, but obviously Harry Kane didn't pick up in both of his games. There's 0.3 difference in them. Yeah, but Harry Kane had a game against Man City, mate. It doesn't really count. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. You're right. <laughs> I definitely know it doesn't. I mean, Pookie and Sterling have had one more effort on Golden Kane this season. Yeah. Kane only had one on Saturday, right? So, and McGinn is fifth on that list. Your shots Poo- on yeah, shots. Just shots. Pookie and Sterling have had 10. Ashley Barnes, Harry Kane, nine. McGinn, eight. Or Bamiang, seven. Mm. So, yeah. McGinn appeal was looking at that, right? Yeah. Ashley Barnes appeal was looking at that. Yeah. At 8.9 million. 27 points so far. That feels a little expensive. One goal, a two. He got 18 in the first game, which obviously will probably include a man of the match as well. Yes, it does. Yeah. Uh, man of the match, shot tears. Um, yeah. I if think you get a forward that's getting two goals, you're going to rip up some points, like, like obviously what Pookie's done this week. Mm. I have. I think I haven't given enough attention to these passing tiers and shot tiers. I think a lot of managers don't. It's not in, well, as an FPL manager, first and foremost, it's not in our nature to go looking for it, is it? Mm-hmm. No. But we need to start paying attention. I feel like I'm getting the idea, like I've picked up this Wolves trend. Mm-hmm. That's something really to... So I'm thinking about a transfer now, say like for Everton, where I keep saying, and I'm thinking about yeah. it and going, I need to think game week four as well. And would I even be in a position where I go, actually, because of, of those passing numbers against Wolves, would I be happy to put Michael Keane as captain? Over, say, a Kane in the North London derby? I think that's an argument. So let, let, uh, let's wrap it up on one question for you, which I think is going to be quite interesting. How many points would you be happy with your captain scoring in any game week in Sky? Six? Eight? Well, if it's Gil- Doubled up, obviously. If it's Gilbert, to... it's Friday. Zero, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, captaincy... What's a good number to hit, six or eight? Like, would you be, okay, that was fine. That's got me through. Because you get two for, a, two, for a, two for appearance, plus let's say you pick up one of your tier two bonuses. So you're up to five points there. I feel like somewhere six, six as a minimum and eight would be ideal for a captain in this. The honest answer is I don't know yet, really. Because, uh, I, I suppose, don't know what I'm happy and unhappy with. The, the, I suppose the, the, the point I'm, reason I'm asking that question is because you could have a captain deliver you the points you want without scoring a goal or creating an assist or keeping a clean sheet by just picking up two. Well, that's my tiers. point. Wan Bissaka at Wolves Monday night hasn't kept a clean sheet and got booked, and he's got seven fucking points, mate. Mm. It's not a joke. <laughs> so this is this is where I'm now thinking. Actually, do you know what? Plotting out how many points are you happy with. And trying to get the points from tier one and tier two bonus is as easy. If it's actually probably potentially easier to predict that than it is goals and assists. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. This is uh, because becoming a bit complicated. The hardest thing the hardest thing in football is to score a goal. Yep. Right? And there are so many variances, people make mistakes, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. When you're looking for someone to hit a certain number of passes in a football match. One action of uh, luck or a mistake is probably not going to have an impact on that overall number over 90 minutes. One person's mistake may affect whether your striker scores or doesn't score. Mm -hmm. So, yes, of course, it's absolutely easier to predict who's going to hit passing tiers, for example. And we can look at the data from last year and even this year, people saying Liverpool are not playing as well. That Van Dijk is still going to be pissing all over them passing tier numbers, right? Yeah. So... Mm. we'll work it out we will um, I, I can't wait to get to the overhaul because I know a lot of things in terms of my restructuring that I want to do it's a, it's a little bit hand tied at the moment that I can't um, my target isn't to win this game this year to win it next year <laughs> um, quick question for you where do you look to find your passing tier stats etc do you click into every I, player individually no I go on hub on fantasy hub Scott, yeah it. go on Will's fantasy football hub they have their own little sky feature uh, was it two quid a month or something? I was saying yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's, wor- it's wor- worth me paying for it just to bring a stat or two into this podcast. <laughs> there we go. Uh, that's Sky Fantasy Football for you, episode three or four. Or I have no idea. Well, I think we're on four, mate. Three. 
because uh, we did one pre-season. Oh, we did, so yeah, four. There we go. Um, please do, do stay tuned on our little mini adventure through Sky Fantasy Football this season as we're on the quest for 50 grand. Um, as you can see, we're kind of feeling our way into the game, mm. sitting roughly mid tier, mid table. Yeah, game with one felt nice, this one didn't feel nah. so nice. Um, but do stay tuned. We'll be back next week. It's only two weeks until the big overhaul, during which time in the international break we'll put out a much longer show yeah. where we really get into during a little bit more detail. During the international break, I think we'll do, we'll do a one-hour Sky exactly. Pod. Exactly. There we go. Uh, thanks for listening. Do stay tuned. Uh, share it with all your Sky Fantasy football playing friends, any of our other content. You're happy to share with your FPL playing friends too. Um, and like, subscribe, follow James on Twitter at Planet FPL Pod or my... Uh, Twitter buyers and is li- Twitter links in the bio as well. It's Anything not at the moment because the only thing in the bio is a live show. Yes, live show three days to go. But we talked enough about that. <laughs> I'd say so. Cool. Ciao for now. Cue music, man. Child. Messi,